that's just her being her. Like even in Bermuda, like she went in her closet and cried. She wasn't like a badass. She wasn't like calling anybody out. She just went in her closet and cried, but she would cause like contention and then didn't know how to handle it. And then it would like, honestly, at Greek Easter, it was fascinating to me because I was watching her, like her mom was being super nice and charming and I'm not behind closed doors. So I don't know their dynamic outside of what I saw, but like, she was more upset with her mom for getting along with everyone than like anything else. It wasn't, she made it about that. Like she got busted. Angie was calling her out. Like actually Angie wasn't even calling her out. She was trying to get clarity. And instead of answering the question, she like diverted it to her mom and then watching her mom, like laughing with the guys being super charming and kind and cool. I think she was jealous of her mom a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I had said that to her at Bobby's birthday party when we were roller skating, it didn't make the cut, but I was like, I think you're jealous of your mom. And now all of your excuses for your bad behavior, I have a bad relationship with my mom, but you know, like I think they're mom and daughter and they're always going to be, they're always going to come back to each other. So I'm like, you know, it was interesting. It was very interesting. Well, it started before we started filming. So there were like, I was doing Sundance and then some things came out on social and I'm like, I wasn't even there. And I was actually filming during Sundance. So like everything I did, like they show like moving a chair, but it's like intense stuff. And there was like a lot of it. And it was nine different lounges and like craziness. And I had talked to Monica before I went up to Sundance. Like that was the first time she got my phone number. She called me super nice. But the first thing I asked her was, are you recording this conversation? And like, my gut was just like, she's recording you. And like, I'm sure she did record the conversation, but I was like very careful with what I said to her. And like, I'm a big believer in like, let people figure things out, like the relationships and stuff. And she was like bashing a few people. And so I was like, you know what, this is a great opportunity for you and your girls. Like this could change your life. This could change like, you know, like your future for you and your girls. I'm happy to support you. I met with her for that first lunch with Angie. And then I filmed with Monica alone and I was super supportive of her, but it was so weird, like how she would react to me, like in Palm Springs. And I was like, this is so weird. Like I've never done anything to this person. And even like when she was like yelling at me in the van because of my ring, she ended up crying and being like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. And then she'd go back to that. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I've never done anything to you. And she made me want to like rub things in her face a little more because she was so triggered by me not doing anything like losing my ring. And then when we were at my Apre ski event and she brought up the Snoop Dogg situation, things started to click for me because I'm like, I've never had that conversation with you. That has never happened. She uses a makeup artist that used to be like a backup for me. Um, and I thought he did a great job and like, I didn't have an issue with him, but he would tell me that he was doing drive-bys with Monica. And I'm like, this is so weird. I'm like, that's weird. Like, I remember telling him like, that's weird. So then all these things start clicking. And then I had like the feeling, like I ran into one of her friends and I'm like, did Monica ever log into Jen's security system? And she literally goes, how did you know? And I'm like, I didn't know, but like, I never had that Snoop Dogg conversation with her. And I'm like, this is so weird. And then one of the videos that surfaced on Reality Von Tees, everybody kept saying it was from a cell phone. And I'm like, no, that's not. That's from Vivant Home Automation because I have it. Like my friend started the company. So I'm like, it's a huge, like massive international company. So I'm like, that had to be from Vivant. And so it all like literally all my gut feelings were like true. And then I was like, that's why I was able to say to her, you do drive-bys, you logged into Jen's security system. And then we got the proof because she would actually send proof to people. She would screenshot the video and like, just be like, no one's going to know. But I'm like, these aren't your real friends. These are people that you bonded with over your disdain for Jen. Maybe I'm a villain to Whitney. I just think Whitney doesn't like, um, the truth, like I told the truth at the reunion and they showed the proof, like she wanted, for some reason she's committed to painting me as this like person that's like not self-aware. And like, listen, I understand my edit. I understand how like Bravo sees me, but I'm like, I'm very cognizant of people. I'm very aware of people. Like um, I'm like very careful with what I say, even on camera, because I know the reaction and like the you know, like the snowball effect of everything. But I thought that was so weird that she was saying that. And I literally sent her a text message and I'm like, I'm not your storyline season five. Like that's not happening. And she's like, you're not my season. And I'm like, keep healing. Cause I think she needs to keep healing. But you know, it's also interesting to me because I think I don't ever talk about my castmates 
other than like to say like, this is what happened. This is my perspective. I don't ever disparage them. So it was really interesting to me that I'm like, why are you talking about me on a podcast? We just went through the craziest season four. Like, why are you bringing me up? And how am I the villain? I, I think I'm the accountant and I always come with the receipts. So I'm like, maybe she should rethink um, my label. This is like the one thing I will say. If you're capable of logging into someone's security system and downloading videos and sharing them with people, um, that's not okay. If you're capable of doing drive-bys in your 40s, and you have four kids at home, that's not okay. If you're capable of videoing your mother without her knowing it and inciting her and then watching her react and videoing that and then sending it like to everybody, like you can think of like that you think should see it, knowing it's gonna get out there. If you're capable of doing those things when you're given a gift, like being a housewife, so many people wanna be one. It's like being part of an NBA team. If you're capable of doing those things, where's the trust? If I have to ask you, if you're recording this conversation and I can't be real, I can't be vulnerable, I can't be open, I don't think that that's a good place for me to be in. And after dealing with everything we've dealt with since season two, like feds, um, NYPD, Homeland Security, convicts, like honestly, after dealing with all of this stuff, why would I want to deal with, why would I welcome that? Like there's enough drama, like I can just tell you this, there's going to be more than enough drama season five like no one's going to remember RVT.